Okay, so for anyone watching on YouTube, this is the same as what we did in the past, but I'm teaching it a tiny bit different. So this is something good to know. And if you missed school today, I'll send this to you. So you're doing two eight today. All right, so two eight says we're determining uh, determining where the function is positive, zero, or negative. Let's kind of break this apart first. Let's look at like a, like a small graph off to the side. If I had a graph over here and it looked something like this <coughs> to a normal polynomial graph, everything above the x-axis is what we call where the function is greater than zero. So everything in yellow is where my function is greater than zero because that's where my y's are greater than zero. So like this hump right here is greater than zero. This part to infinity is greater than zero. All that fun stuff. Everything below the x-axis is less than zero. I made it blue because for some reason that's how my brain works. Blue should be less than. Anyone else have weird color associations? Yeah. Yeah. So this is like left band from like negative infinity to that. And then this little hump down here is all last band. These are where my function is less than zero. We also have to notice where my function is equal to zero. And that's just physically on the axis. I'm going to argue that if we know the end of behavior and if we know the zeros, then we can know where my function is positive, negative, et cetera. Okay, so my equation over here says determine where f of x equals x plus 3, x squared plus 1, and x minus 4 squared is positive, 0, and negative. Okay, first thing we're going to do is what are my x's based on that um, function? What counts as a 0? What's x? What'd you say? No, this one, sorry, the one we're on. Negative 3, what else works? Plus or minus. I can I graph that? No. Do I need to include them? No. Don't include the negative numbers. We're going to be not very welcoming today. Negative or sorry, imaginary numbers don't get to count today. What other real number counts? Two, three, two. Nope. One. From this equation right here. Four. And what's special about four? It bounces, okay? Those are my zeros. We're going to note that we're going to bounce them. Okay? Now I want to think about end behavior. Is this a positive or a negative function? Is my f of x in the box, is that positive or negative? Positive, but there's no negative up front, so it's positive. And then we got to count the x's to see if it's even or odd. I see one with the x plus three. I see two here, so I'm up to three, and I see two more, so I'm up to five. But it's five even or odd. Oh, good. So we've got a positive odd graph. I'm going to make a little number line. If you want to make a whole graph like I did over here in yellow and blue, that's fine. But I think a number line is just as effective. Things happen at three, at negative three, and at four. Those are my zeros. So that's where we cross the x axis, so we go from negative to positive. If it's a positive odd graph, it started going down, right? Is that the negative numbers or the positive numbers? Negative numbers, right? Then it crossed over my axis. Negative three was a normal zero. So then it's gonna go to be on the positive side. And then you guys told me that four bounces. So is after four, is it gonna be on the positive side or is it gonna be below on the negative? Positive because it bounces and it's going to stay on the positive side. This is all my answers are going to be written in interval notation and it's going to be based on these intervals. So if I use the color coordination I did before, everything less than zero, my function is less than zero where we're from negative infinity to negative three. And then everything is bigger than zero, my y is bigger than zero from negative three to infinity. Now notice that I didn't mark anything on my negative three and four. That's where we equal zero. So sometimes we're gonna include those, sometimes we're not. 
anybody have a question on how I found my zeros or how I found my positive or negative or even or odd? I'm going to tell you in one second. And then anybody questions on my number line, Daniel? The odd part. So I just count my x's. So I have one x here. The next one is squared. So that means I've got two more x's. So I'm up to three. And then this guy is also squared. So I've got two more, which is fine. Okay, now it says that we want to know where is the graph positive zero and negative. So I'm thinking about where is my function going to be greater than zero? Where is my function going to be equal to zero? And where is my function going to be less than zero? Since I don't have or equal to's on these, that means I don't get to include the zeros here. I think the zeros is the easiest answer to write. My zeros are actually the zeros you found at the very beginning. What are my two zeros? Good. Negative three comma four. The best interval notation would be to put these fancy braces around it, but you can just list it as negative three and four. That's fine. It's less than zero where it's blue. What interval is that? Where does it stop being blue? Negative three. And I'm going to parentheses there because I do not get to include my zeros. I just want what's less than zero, not equal to zero. And then similarly, we're going to do greater than, that's my yellow pieces. I was intentional to put that red dot there because I want the interval from negative three to four, and then I want the interval from four to infinity. I do not want to just go from negative three to infinity because I, I only said what's greater than zero, not what equals. So we'll say negative three comma four, and then four to infinity. So why would you address this? Because I don't get to include negative three. Because these are greater than and less than, so negative three doesn't count. In a minute, though, the next one, you see how we have a, a less than or equal to? We're going to use brackets. Okay, so steps. We found zeros. We did positive, negative, even odd. And then we did a number line graph to see where was it positive, negative, even odd. And then you may have to do all of these. You may only have to do one. You ready to do another one? How do you know there was no Because like, um, it says, where is it positive, zero, and negative? So I read positive as like a positive number, not zero and above. Okay, next one. Same thing here. Let's do zeros here. Oh, yeah, Jack. It matters that it bounced because it stayed on the positive side up here, but it kept zero here. It wasn't positive. Okay, we're going to do a similar one. So maybe if, like, so after we do a couple of these, some of the questions will kind of work their way out. What are my zeros for number two? Good? Good? Anything special with any of my zeros? Good. Six is going to bounce. Okay, so we'll make note of that. The next thing we did is look at my equation and we said, is this positive or negative, even or odd? Positive or negative? I think I heard positive. Yeah, okay. What about even or odd? Even, I count one, two, three, four. Okay, now that we know our zeros, we know our positive, negative, even, odd, we're going to make a little number line. I've got negative 7, negative 4, and 6. Show me with your arms, what does positive even look like? Perfect. So that means it's starting on the positive side, it's ending on the positive side. So I'm, I know that's felt silly, a little touchdown Jesus there, but I want positive here because we're starting positive. Unlike last time, we started negative. At seven, I do my normal cross, so then we go over to the negative side. At negative four, we cross again, so we go back to the positive side. And then at six, we bounce, so we stay on the positive side. Which makes sense, because you told me our arms went like this, and I'm beginning and I'm ending positive. Okay, so 
All right, now, this problem says we want to know where is it less than or equal to zero. I don't need to do all three of the ones I did before. I only want to do where f of x is less than or equal to zero. On my number line, where would that be? Where the positive net signs are or where the negative signs are? Good, negative seven to negative four. Do I get to include negative seven and negative four? Yes, why? Or equal to, very good. So my interval notation is going to be bracket parentheses, bracket, negative seven, comma, negative four, bracket parentheses, bracket. Hint with these, since it's either going to be less than or less than or equal to, they're both going to be, if it's two numbers, they're both going to be brackets or they're both going to be parentheses. There won't be as much one of these as there will be. All right, how are we doing? Rolling? Great, let's do number three. Ooh, this one's not factored out. How do we find our zeros? Grouping, very good, let's group it. Group those two, group those two. Squared x minus four, negative x plus four. Oh, I can take a negative out and it's gonna be x minus four. I'm carrying my greater than zero. It's not really changing anything, but I'm just carrying it through so I don't lose it. Because I grouped, I can do x squared minus one and x minus four. Solve. Oh, x will actually equal a whole number here. It'll be positive or negative one, and it will equal four. So my zeros are negative one, positive one, four. Questions yet? All right, now remember we have to go back and think about positive, negative, even odd. What is this graph going to be? Positive odd, very good. Remember when it's not factored out, all you have to do is look at that first term. X to the third is a positive number and that three is odd, so that's how we know it's a positive number. Okay, what do we do now that we have the zeros and we have the end behavior? Number line. All right, I'm going to put negative one, one, four on my number line. Can you show me with your hands what positive odd should look like? Going to the disco. <laughs> Make sure that you're ending on the right side. Ending, your right side is where you end, and that's up. So I'm going to end going positive. And that means I'm starting low, so I'm starting on the negative side. <laughs> Do I have any funny zeros? Am I bouncing or cubing or anything crazy? No, just cross, cross, cross. So every time we have a zero, we change sides. So I go negative, then I go in between the positive, and then I go negative. Okay, any questions yet? The, the problem said we want to know where my function is greater than zero. Is that going to be my pluses or my minuses? Pluses. pluses. So we need to do the pluses. Do I get to include my zeros? No. What should my first interval be? Lucy, say it again. Negative one to one, parentheses. What's my second interval going to be? Four to infinity. Everything is, is parentheses here. Yeah. Why is the negative one parentheses? Well, the function is greater than zero starting at where x is negative one. The y will be fine. Good question. All right, flip your paper over. Bless you. All right, number four. This one says solve. Ooh, but I can't do factoring as pretty as we did last round. 
What do we do if we can't factor? Not graph. We will do synthetic, but we have to list what first? PRRs. I'll tell you which one it is, but you have to list them for me. Okay, how do I list them? One, two, three, four, six, eight, twelve. Where'd it go? Over. One and two. One and two. So it could be one, two, three, four, six, eight, twelve, twenty-four, or it could be one half, one th or two th or one half, three halves, everything else even. If we didn't know, we'd have to start at positive one, plug it in, see if it works. Negative one, plug it in, see if it works. What works first is negative two. We've already practiced plugging it in. I don't need to practice that today. So the, only, the first one that works is negative two. So let's do our synthetic division with that one. So I've got two. Are you going to do one of those? Like plug them all in? It just takes so much time to make you do that. So I don't like to do that because I'd rather you spend time on other problems. Um, but I truly haven't looked at the final yet, so I can't make a promise I can't do so. What'd you say? Well, we like generally use the same ones. What? That's why we don't pass them back to you guys. Oh, I did not know that. You guys made it to senior year, you didn't know teachers didn't use their finals? I thought you guys just created them. Oh, <laughs> How much time do you think we got? <laughs> oh. All right, negative four, that becomes negative 11, that becomes positive 22. <laughs> Some teachers use tests forever. Like, like, like sister. I don't think this is my oh, yeah. Is I remember that one class I said for you when I go, I think I took this class yeah. back in high school. Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes, it makes more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this it is all the same. There's only so many ways you can test, right? right. Only so many ways you can test. So. Oh, all right. <laughs> We did our synthetic, and now I'm going to argue that we can easily factor this one down. If we couldn't, what other method could we use to solve? Quadratic. But I believe that factoring works really nice. So let's do that. Okay, multiplies to be 12, adds 2 to be negative 11. So 2 and 6, 1 won't work. Um, what is 12 and 6? 12 and 6. Oh, it's going to multiply to be positive, so they're both going to be negative. 4 and 3? That works. Um, so x equals three halves and four. And then don't forget the x that we use in synthetic division that also counts as a zero. So what else should I write next to those two numbers? Negative two, very good. Those are my zeros. Can we list positive, negative, even odd now? What do we think? Positive? Oh. Remember when it's not factored, just look at the very first term. Sorry, did I interrupt something? Okay, positive, odd, those are my zeros. Let's make our number one. Does anything funny happen at any of these zeros? No, they just cross like normal. There's no squares, there's no cubes, there's no nothing. The only thing is don't forget to put them in number order. If you put them out of order, it's going to be confusing. All right, positive odd looks like we're going to the disco. So we start low. Negative, and then we end high. So I do positive. Switch from low to high and then switch back low to the high. All right, and we want to know what interval do I want to know here? Greater than zero. Where did you see that, Lucy? 
in the equation? I know it sounds like a dumb question, but I get that every day. So it's in the equation. So make sure you read the equation and you don't just give me whatever you think. The equation says greater than zero. So f of x is greater than zero. And where is that plus or minus is? Do I get to include my zeros this time? No. What should my intervals be? Okay, and four All right, we got a couple calculator problems. Ready? Do it. Calculators out. Before we graph number five, let's put everything to one side. Let's bring everything to one side and then we're going to graph that. So I'm going to minus two from both sides. I'm going to add 8x to both sides. So the equation I am going to write in my calculator is x to the third minus 6x squared plus 8x minus two. That's it. You're not going to put any greater than, less than, equal to anything in the calculator. You're just going to graph that. I don't know if I can show you this on this calculator, but on like your guys' calculator, you can change that equal sign. People see the less, less than or greater than, and they want to change that equal sign. Do not change the equal sign. Just let it be y equals, and then I'll show you what I want from you. So just type in x to the third minus 6x squared plus 8x minus 2. Like this will not factor. So what you're going to see is that the zeros are not actual numbers. So we want to put the calculator to get real numbers out. Can I go away from this screen, y'all? Okay. Graph. Oh shoot, my graph is wild. Make sure you, let's put your window at Zoom standard. Make it normal window. Okay. Ten by ten. All right, we can draw a little calculate a little um, picture off to the side just so we can kind of see what's going on. Because I can draw on that, I can't draw on the calculator. Looks like I've got something like that. We want to know where our graph is less than or equal to zero. And where physically on the graph am I less than or equal to zero? What'd you say? Below the x-axis? Exactly. Below the x-axis, anywhere below the x-axis works. And so in order to know like when we stop being below the x-axis, we need to find our zeros. So we're just gonna second trace zeros, find at this point. That's zero, this zero, and this zero. Because we start or stop at each of them. Point three, two, four, one point five. That we've got, and then four point two. You can just trust me; it should work. If not, you guys know how to find that. We found that a lot, so that's how to score. If those are my zeros, what's my interval? What are my intervals going to be? What to what? Good, negative infinity to point three two. Okay. 
And good. And I just put a bracket. Was that right or do I need, or sorry, I put a parenthesis. Is that right or do I need to put a bracket? Bracket. 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 Bracket.
So I still have x plus 1, I still have x minus 3, but now I have minus 4x minus 12 over x minus 3. The whole reason I got like denominators was so I could put them all over x minus 3. So we're going to combine them all. So I've got x plus 1 minus, think about that minus going to both the 4x and the negative 12. So it'll be minus 4x plus 12. And it's all still less than 0. The last step is combine everything on top. If I can do any simplifying, I will at this point, but I can't. The top is going to be negative 3x plus 13 over x minus 3. No simplifying will help me here. There's nothing in common with everything. There's nothing to cross out of a top and bottom. This is as good as it gets. Okay, from here, can you find my vertical asymptote? What's that going to be? Three. Three. Well, just simply Perfect, set that denominator equal to zero, x equals three. Okay, so just like before we had a list of zeros, now I'm gonna use my x-intercepts, if I have more than one, and my vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is three. Now my x-intercept, how do I find that? Perfect, B set numerator equal to zero. This one's gonna be ugly, negative three x plus 13 equals zero. That's like 13 equals 3x, or x equals 13 divided by 3. Still a number, though, I can put on a number line. Anybody questions yet? So from the beginning, I had to move everything to one side and get it to be one fraction. Once it was in one fraction, I found my VA and my um, x-intercept. I'm going to go graph that on my little number line. Which one's smaller? Three smaller? And then 13 divided by 3 is the bigger number. Okay. Let's just do a quick little aside on what a rational function looks like. You can draw this or you can just listen to me. Remember a rational function from our BFF, it always starts on the negative side unless it's negative. And then it's on the positive side. That's what we've been doing. That's what we've been doing. I don't know how, I don't think very often we've done it flipped where it starts on the positive and goes to the negative. Um, if I find that that happens more often, we'll talk about it. But I think it's safe to assume that it's gonna always start on the negative. And then once you hit the vertical asymptote, that's when we switch to the positive side. And let's say I happen to have a zero, so let's move this guy down. Like let's say my horizontal asymptote was down here. When you have an x-intercept, then you go back down to the negative side. So the vertical asymptote switches you and the um, x-intercept. So if I started negative, then I went positive, and then I went negative again. So I flipped at my vertical asymptote. So I hit my three, I switched. And then I hit my x-intercept and I switch again. So those are our like turning points, if that makes sense. Now I have a little number line, just like we did on the last problem. And we want to figure out where are we less than zero. I can get my color association back. What intervals am I less than zero? Three. So my f of x is less than zero from negative infinity to three and from 13 thirds to positive infinity. Everything here is parentheses again because it just says less than, it does not say less than or equal to. So because it's a rational function, we're always going to start on the negative side. And then the vertical asymptotes and the x-intercepts are always cause a switch. So I was negative, then I go positive, and then I was positive, and I go negative again. 
We got another one like this. Let's do one more, okay? So let's, we got everything on one side. We just got to get it in one fraction now. So let's multiply kind of by the opposite denominators. I'm going to multiply the first one by x plus 3 on both parts. And the first one will be times x minus 1 on both parts. So why wouldn't you do the thing we did last time? Where we where we canceled everything out because this is going to be a rational function and I need to take into account what's in the denominator. I need that's an important point where we do like turns, so we have to keep them there. Okay, so I've got um, you can kind of do this all in one step. I can think of it as like five times x minus one plus three times x plus three, and all of it is over x plus three x minus one. I'm distributing on top, but I'm not on bottom because I'm going to end up factoring in the bottom anyway. So let's just leave it in the factor form as it is. So the top becomes 5x minus 5 plus 3x plus 3 over x minus 3x x plus 3x minus 1. And then one more simplifying, I get 8x minus 2 over x minus 3x plus I know you can take two out of everything on top, but does that cancel with anything on the bottom? No, so it's not you. Not worth doing. Not worth my time. Wouldn't it be not? Would it be what? It might be. Let's see. Oh, right here. And then what? My what's my number gonna be? Four. Okay. So you just still have a common number, not worth doing anything about, but thank you for fixing that because that's going to be an issue in two seconds. What two things do I need to find here? The vertical asymptote and my x-intercept, so let's do those. Vertical asymptote is my denominator, so x plus 3 and x minus 1 equals 0, which means that x equals negative 3 and positive 1. Two of those. And my x intercept is 8x plus 4 equals 0. Minus 4, negative 1. All right, once I have those um, things, make your number line with those numbers on it. Again, always go smallest to biggest. And as I said with rational functions, we always start negative. And then there's nothing special. There's no bouncing in rational functions, so you just alternate. Negative, positive, negative, positive. Questions yet? And the question asked me to find where my function is what? Less than zero, very good. F of x is less than zero where? Parentheses or brackets on everything. Good. Okay. And I actually don't want to do 10 today, so we're on the last one. We did it almost. I got ahead of ourselves. This will be a calculator problem, so get your calculator out ready. And this is actually kind of a throwback <coughs> Thursday kind of problem. Let's talk about In boxes. Thursday. It is Thursday. It worked out nicely. Uh -huh. 
Well, throwback problem. So our box problem. Do you guys remember doing those boxes with the cut out corners? <gasps> I didn't tell you it was a throwback Thursday you'd like. I just said it was a throwback Thursday. I've got this box. And we want the volume to be at least. I want the volume to be more than or equal to. That's what the same thing as at least is. It must be 600 or more. The squares are still to be cut out from my corners. And my box dimensions are 20 by 25. Do you remember how we express volume with these problems? Almost. No, not quite. 20 plus 2x. Minus. Minus 2x. Yes. And then one more thing. And then one more thing. X. X somewhere. So because all of these little corners are x, I'm going to do 20 minus off 2x's. I'm going to do 25 minus off 2x's. I don't care what your side lengths are, you're always minusing off two X's. And I have X because when I fold my box up, I need to be able to be a height of X. And as I said, we want it to be less or greater than or equal to 600. All right, we want to know what size squares we have. So we're going to go to our calculator and we're going to graph these. This is going to be my Y1. This is going to be my Y2. Graph will look something like that, and let's go look at the graph, and then we'll talk more about it. X, 20 minus 2X, 25 minus 2X, and 600. Big, biggest mistake is not having 2X. Another big mistake is not having X, so make sure you have X. 20 minus 2x and 25 minus 2x. All right, window. There's no need for any mins. Let's make those all zero. X min and y min will both be zero. I actually do know my x max. Remember how we found our domain here? What's the biggest um, cut that I could make? Half the smallest side? which in this case would be 10. So my X dimensions are going to go zero to 10. And then my Y, we're just going to make a guess, but it has to be bigger than 600 because I'm going to have a straight horizontal line at 600. I might put in a thousand just to make sure that I can see it. I'm going to press graph. 600 is, we must at least reach 600. So I put in 1000 on my graph. So my Y went up all the way up to 1000. Okay, now what? Find the intersection. Second trace intersect. Follow your props. Um, my X goes from zero to 10 and my Y goes from zero to a thousand. My other zero or my other intersect is 6.2. Second trace, and then it's number five, I think. Yeah, of course. Okay, do I want just those points by themselves? Do I want the space above it? Do I want the space below it? What interval am I going to write? What'd you say? Space above. Yep, that's what I want. Why do you know that, Quinn? Because you want 
I want my volume to be 600 or I want it to be bigger than, right? So if I know where 600 is, then I want all of the numbers above that too, because those go upwards of like 800. Yeah, like 815 or 820 is like the highest I see. So I want to get up towards that. So when I write this in interval notation, do I use parentheses or brackets? Brackets. 1.7 comma 6.2. All right. I don't believe we'll ever do number 10, but if I feel like it, I'll do that next class with you. But we finished 2.8. Great work today. Um, that homework is due next time I see you, which is Monday. I'm going to turn off the video. Thanks for watching.